I learned not long ago, and you're always learning. I'm 60 years old, but if you stop learning, you know you're in trouble. But I was talking to a guy about how do you get folks engaged in the things that you have passion about? And you have to have an emotional connection. And I never thought about it that way because I never understood why people just didn't come along and support and do the things that you felt like they ought to do without too much nudging. So let me tell you about my children's home. You know, Brother Dan Rice, or past Grandmaster Rice was here, I understand, in 2010 when they were crucifying our Brother Bill over here. And, you know, Dan grew up at that home. And I told Dan, though, one time, even though he's an alumni, a lot of us did a lot of growing up at that home. Now, let me tell you what I mean. Brother, when I was a young man, about nine years old, my father, who's a Mason over in Roy, uh, Stanley County, 703, that the senior Dickon mentioned a minute ago, we went up to the thing called the children's home. And in that day, there was 300 probably children there residing. And you'd go in and you'd sit in the cafeteria with 300 children. Now, I don't know about you, brother, but I didn't grow up in a home where I had breakfast, lunch, and dinner with 300 people. And it left an impression on me that it took me a number of years later to realize what the connection was and how to connect the dots. So, fast forward a few years, I take my bride over to the children's home. And we go down to something called, it's not brown, I called it wrong, I think, before being, but it used to be the baby's cottage there on the, on the campus. And then when you walked into the baby cottage, you went downstairs and there was two rows of single beds. And there were probably ten children that resided in that room. And they were our babies. And they had little stuffed animals and all, all over the beds, just like you would see a baby would have. And my wife looked at me and said, don't you ever do that to me again. And I said, honey, what do you mean? She said, I get it. I get why we're here and I get why we support this children's home. I can't take them home with me. So however we've got to support that children's home, let's just do it. Fast forward a few more years. I'm sitting in the cafeteria and they had a gathering that day and a little six-year-old girl sits down in front of us and some of you know her name. I'm kind of protective of that name, but it's out there. And for 30 minutes, this six-year-old has a conversation with this old guy. And Chris doesn't like to use the word stole from you when you're talking about children, but she stole something from me that day. Brother, you probably guess what it was. It was my heart. Now, a few years later, she was one of seven children, and we had all of them there at the home. And she went back to live with her mother, and we lost her for a couple of years, but she is now back at our children's home. In fact, I just saw her this past weekend uh, when I was over for an event. Fast forward a few more years. How many of you have been on the children's home property in Oxford? Okay, we need to do something with the rest of that. Brethren, there's something there called God's Half Acre. There's 400 acres there. And I kept hearing about this thing, Steve. You've probably heard about it. You've probably seen it. God's half acre. And I said, brother, somebody take me down and let me see this place. You go back on the property, back through the soybean field, and there's this little plot of earth. And I guess it's a half acre, Ben. I'm not sure, but it's close to it. There's roughly 70 children buried that were children being raised in our home in the late 1800s and early 1900s, for the most part, that passed away. And we're not talking about adults. We're talking about three- and four- and five-year-old children buried there in God's half acre. Now, brethren, I came home and was telling my wife about this. I just discovered this thing three years ago, two years ago. And I was telling her about this, this beautiful place that was a little bit run down. And she said, oh, really? And we got a newsletter from the children's home that said they were having a capital fundraiser to, to clean up that God's half acre. And she said, and this is not about money for me. This is about doing what your heart tells you to do. 
She says, how much? And I told her, she said, write him a check. My wife has that emotional connection to that children's home. And brethren, you're hearing the passion in my voice. If you don't, we will stay here a little bit longer tonight. And we'll talk a little bit more about my passion. But we talked about it a couple of years ago, and I continue to talk about it. We've got to have a breakthrough over at the children's home. Some 13 years ago, some visionaries had the idea that we needed to do something different to that home. And they were breakthrough thinkers, Ben, and I don't know if they knew they were breakthrough thinkers at the time. That, old, that home had dormitories just like the, the baby cottage. And the kids resided there, and these guys said, we need to build cottages and build homes like most of us grew up in. Because when you raise a child, you want to release them into the world as an adult and be, get them prepared, and that was one way to prepare them. So they built these cottages and did not have a dime to get started with the program. How many of you have seen the Field of Dreams movie? You know, if you build it, they will come. Those brethren took a chance on building those cottages, and guess what? They were all paid off about two years ago. And there was about seven of them. Brethren, here's my problem. And I look around this room, and a lot of us are my age and a little younger and a little older, but life's too short. I don't have a whole lot more time. So we've got work to do over at that children's home. Fundraisers for fellowship. You know, we often said, if you'll do a fundraiser, and I know you guys do one for the home, if you do a fundraiser for the fellowship, the money will take care of itself. Is that not true, brethren? When two or three are gathered together in His name, beautiful things happen. So brethren, look at your neighbor and say, fundraisers are a good thing. Come on, talk to each other. Come on. There you go. And you know, there's a lot of fundraisers going on, barbecue, my lodge does the, the Brunswick stew, and that's coming up. But the beautiful thing happened this past weekend was the Eureka Charity Bike Ride over at Children's Home. Eureka Lodge happens to be in my neighborhood in Rowan County. They rolled through with the bikes on Saturday, and we were there to welcome them. Those boys have raised over 18 years $380,000 to support that children's home. They turned in a check for $23,000 this past Saturday. Now, brethren, there's 372 three lodges in North Carolina, and just imagine if all of them could raise $20,000, money would not be a problem. And money should not be a problem for us Masons when it comes to the children, and especially the children of that children's home. We don't need to worry about money. We need to worry about doing other things. And that's growing that home. Brethren, the work at our children's home is important. Look to your neighbor and tell your neighbor that. Oh, come on, let's hear it. So brethren, with that, a couple things I want you to put on your calendar. October the 9th and 11th, coming up in about four weeks, is a thing called the homecoming at the children's home. Now, I know some of you haven't been there, but if you haven't been to the homecoming, what we need you to do is get your bride, get your children, and especially those of us with the white hair and the no hair in here, get your grandchildren and come over to that home on October the 9th and the 11th. Let me tell you what's going to happen to you if you show up. I'm going to tell you one thing that's going to happen to you at the end of the thing. You show up on Friday. The boys are going to be in there setting up their cookers and getting ready to feed those three to 4,000 people that are going to show up the next day for this homecoming. My lodge is going to cook a Brunswick stew down there in the corner. We're going to feed you. And then they're going to have a band, and the band's going to play some music for you until late at night. And if we pull it off, we're going to put a movie on about 9.30 that night for those that are hanging out there. And then Saturday morning, we're going to get you up in Orphan's Lodge. 761 is going to open at 8 o'clock in the morning. And you get to gather with all your brethren around the state and enjoy that beautiful thing there on that campus. Then at 10 o'clock, all three temples, shrine temples, will have almost all of their teams out there putting on the best parade. You ever seen that right, Bill? The best parade you've ever seen. That's the reason your grandchildren need to be there, so they can see the parade. Then we're going to feed you. And you old beachgoers there, at about 12, 15, 12, 30, a little band called the Embers is going to entertain you. And guess what it cost you? Nothing but your time and a little money for the food when you go through the pit. 
then you're going to lose something, your heart, when you get there. And we're going to grow your heart, which is going to cause us to extend our family and do that. Brethren, coming to the homecoming is important. Look to your neighbor and tell them that's important. So my friends, that children's home has been in place for 143 years. We have served and had over 10,000 children come through those gates. Masons in North Carolina have been serving God and children for 143 years at that beautiful place called Oxford, which is not too far from here up at 85. And it's worthy of our calling. Brother, my minister, who actually is a Mason, and I raised him the year I was Grand Master, tells me that the church is wherever I am. Isn't that so? So wherever you are, that's where the church is. Wherever you are as a Mason, that's where your Masonic Lodge and your heart is. Wherever you are, you represent that. He also tells me we all have a ministry. And my ministry is not inside those walls there at St. Paul's Episcopal Church on Sunday morning that I regularly attend. My ministry is at Oxford. I didn't recognize that until a few years ago when he told me. He said, we know where you're supposed to be and where you need to be. So the home, our children's home at Oxford is wherever I am. Brethren, it's wherever you are. I always like to remind ourselves, we knelt at that sacred altar and we said we would do something. Something about widows and orphans. Now, brethren, they're not all orphans over there. In fact, I don't think any of them are orphans. But they're still our children. And we look after them. So, brethren, we all have a calling. And I'm asking you tonight, on behalf of that children's home, the 40,000 Masons in North Carolina, please come. Because if you come, you will see the beauty of what God and Masons have supported and created for all these years. Brethren, I hope I didn't ramble too long. Ben, I hope I didn't give you more than you needed. Bill, thank you for the invite. Randy, it's always a pleasure to see you guys. If you're over in Salisbury, come see me the first and third Thursday night, Andrew Jackson 576. But please, on that Saturday morning, the 19th, please come and please put it on your counter because, brethren, if we get you there, we'll get you hearts. And only beautiful things can happen to that children's home and the people that we serve. Thank you, my brethren, for your time and your patience.